PPC News G20 and the hope for global coordination. Accessibility links. Skip to content. Skip to local navigation. Accessibility help. PPC.co.uk navigation. News, sport, weather, capital, culture, autos, TV, radio, more. Search term. Business. Home. U.S. and Canada. Latin America. U.K. Africa. Asia. Europe. Mideast. Business. Health. C. Slash. Environment. Tech. Entertainment. Video. Market data. Economy. Entrepreneurship. Business of sport. Companies. Technology of business. Knowledge economy. The 4th of September 2013 last updated at 18 net. Share this page. Delicious. Dig. Facebook. Reddit. Stumble upon. Twitter. Email. Print. Article written by Linda U. Chief Business Correspondent. More from Linda. G20 and the hope for global coordination. Please turn on JavaScript. Media requires JavaScript to play. Leaders of the G20 will meet to discuss the global economic agenda in St. Petersburg in Russia. More from Linda. Great reversal and the Fed. Power and economic transition. Why it matters to persuade global markets. Is India in danger of another crisis? The lofty aim of global economic policy coordination is at the top of the G20 agenda once again. This is not to suggest that it's not needed, just that action, rather than discussion, hasn't happened very often. There are certainly areas where coordination among countries would be helpful, including tax avoidance and combating tax havens. More than 50 countries, including, crucially, the Asian countries that had lagged behind in joining in, such as China and Singapore, have signed up and progress is being made. G20 emerges. What I am referring to is the recurring call to coordinate economic policy globally that hasn't really been answered. Think back to November 2008 when President George W. Bush convened the G20, dusting off a group that had been in existence for about a decade, but hadn't really been a premier body in global decision-making. It was what was needed, since the G7, G8 didn't include emerging economies. The aim was for governments to coordinate their fiscal stimulus. The International Monetary Fund called for the G20 countries to increase their discretionary government spending by 2% of GDP. Since some of that spending would spill over and benefit other countries through exports, by coordinating, there would be a bigger bang for the buck. That didn't happen explicitly. Almost countries did boost government spending at around the same time in any case. If that seemed challenging, at least there was agreement as to why coordination would be beneficial. There was also a straightforward action that could have achieved it. Banks cooperate. Of course, it's important to note that where there has been policy coordination is among central banks. The Federal Reserve and others, including the People's Bank of China, all cut interest rates during the depth of the global financial crisis, which increased the impact of their actions, even though it wasn't explicitly coordinated. Subsequently, central banks worked together. Most notably, the Fed, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of Canada and the Swiss National Bank set up swap lines to help each other access U.S. dollars and each other's currencies cheaply. That helped maintain liquidity for global banks and other financial institutions, which were taking fright at the frail state of your own banks, as that crisis threatened to become another banking crisis. During the five years since the 2008 crisis, oh, the actions of central banks have become the source of concern. Emerging economies are worried that central banks don't take account of the wider impact or spillover from their actions. But it's less clear what can be done about it. For instance, the global impact of the Fed's cheap cash or quantitative easing cat, policy has been a recurring source of concern. Tapering worries. Countries such as Brazil have been worried about how it would weaken the U.S. dollar and lead to a range of problems in their economies, including a possible currency war. 